Play big, baby. Placing some bets. I can help money. And making some money. All right, guys, so I'm here with the uh, hated football equipment manager, Kenny Farr. Yes, sir. At Oregon. Yes, sir. How you doing today? Doing great, man. Number one, the hoodie's tough. Hey, man. <laughs> a little something we're doing around here, just kind of showcasing some of the stuff we've done over the years. Obviously, I'm going to go to your office where you have a crap ton of <laughs> memorabilia, right? And obviously, I want to talk to you about, you know, kind of how you got to this position. Yeah. I know you were a long time yeah. Oregon guy, so let's hop in the office. Let's, let's, let's check it. it out. All right, man. Come on in. I want to start with just first, what's the one piece in your office that kind of really tugs your heartstrings or really kind of hits home? You know, I was part of a team here in 2001 that won the Fiesta Bowl and that team got put in the Athletic Department Hall of Fame. You know, that's probably at the beginning of when Oregon really started elevating itself into that national brand and getting close to winning national championships. So that one has a special place in my heart for sure. So I started here in 1997 uh, as a student manager, you know, when I applied to school, I got like financial aid. And uh, I was like, man, I don't want to work like in a cafeteria or anything. Nothing against that, but that's just not what I wanted to do. So I reached out to somebody in the athletic department and they kind of got me lined up with Ed Garland, my old boss. And, you know, <laughs> here it is 20 years later, man, I'm still here. What's kind of the secret to, to that longevity? You know, it's just like anything in life. I think it's just, you know, if you enjoy what you do, care factor has to be high. Being an equipment manager is a relationship business. Really for me, it's about developing those relationships with the players and the staff and letting them know that and I'm going to take care of them the best that I can and, and that they know that. Now, noticing the jerseys behind you, tell me a story about each of the guys. You know, Marcus is a better individual than he was a player, which is incredible to say because he's an incredible player. My wife is from Hawaii, so obviously any of the players that come, Polynesian players or uh, players from Hawaii that come over here, like I take a special pride in those guys. I remember talking to him when he first got here about he really wanted to wear number eight. And uh, so we kind of got that lined up and you know, that's probably one of the most famous numbers in, in the school now. Obviously with him winning the Heisman Trophy, just an incredible guy and he had a lot of fun, man. Still kind of, you know, keep in touch with him pretty close today. DeForest Buckner, man, a phenomenal person, great player. Obviously he plays for the Indianapolis Colts now and he was back here this summer working out and gave me this jersey and got it framed up. But just super proud of, you know, when you meet these guys in there. 17, 18 years old to seeing them now where they're, you know, all pro NFL players. Big Seattle Seahawks fan. So when Ugo uh, got drafted to the Seahawks, that was awesome. My guy, Ugo, who came all the way out here to Oregon from Nashville and signed here sight unseen. So him and I have a great bond and, and talk a lot. You know, I have a lot of jerseys. I probably have about 50 frame jerseys. So these rotate from okay. now and now. That's just who's up here today. Other equipment managers don't really have this problem, but you're at the University of Oregon. You guys get you guys get heat. Uh, just discuss that aspect of the job. Well, I mean, obviously, you know, with our relationship with Mr. Knight and with Tinker Hatfield, who's you know designed many of the retro Jordans. The process of him providing exclusive Jordans for our players over the years and, and that how popular those are in the sneaker community. It's just a blessing that I'm here. There's nothing I personally did other than I've seen in this chair. I get a lot of attention just because I kind of oversee the distribution of those things, but I can't take any credit other than just the facilitator. I've been fortunate to, you know, have articles written and, and be involved with that and, and got a few pairs of shoes out of this. Is that a challenge too? Do you, do you get phone calls by people like, hey man, I say, I saw the threes drop, I need Yeah, I, need I get a lot of those and I wish I could take care of everybody. That It's not always the case. You know, we wanna make sure people are taking care of what they are limited, but I do take a lot of pride in taking care of, especially foreign players here, guys that put in the, the work here and uh, built this place to what it is now. So who are some of the, the, the people you were most surprised by like, getting the call like, oh wow, you need a pair? You know, a Drake or LeBron or KD or, you know, guys like that. And you know, it's not really a thing where those guys are calling me directly, but somehow or another, it gets to me that, that they're interested in, in getting, you know, something Oregon and what a, you know, great, branding and advertising opportunity for our school. Just to take it back a little bit, you mentioned earlier that you were a, a big Seahawks fan. Yeah. As I look around, I'm noticing Seahawks helmets and yeah. colorways I've never seen. What would you rank Seahawk helmet? I'd probably go chrome first. Okay. I've always been like a white helmet fan, so I'd probably the white, then that, and then the camo. 
Yeah, go Seahawks, man. That's my team. Do you have a lot of stuff at home too? I do. I do. <laughs> probably too much if you ask my wife. But man, it's just a blessing to work here as long as I have and the relationships that I've built that, you know, I've been fortunate to get some stuff. I've also heard that you guys keep all the former players' jerseys. Is that true? So, you know, there's been times where guys have left here after their four or five, three, four, five years that have had like 50 jerseys from their career. And some guys get those right after they graduate. And then some guys can get some and then they need to wait and get the rest of them. And I hold on to all of those. And so when those guys want to come back, maybe it's five, six, seven, ten 10 years later, and they want to bring their families back and they're going to ask me, hey, do you still have any of my jerseys? And I do. And, and I just take a lot of pride in that. Those guys, you know, blood, sweat and tears in those jerseys that getting rid of them any other way really just, I just didn't feel right about that. How many jerseys are up here? Oh, there's got to be a couple thousand for sure. They're all organized by player last name. So it makes it easy for me when a guy comes back that I haven't seen in a while. And, you know, these guys do pretty well, man. Oregon jerseys are a hot commodity for sure. Is there a particular design that you kind of had your hand in? The brains behind the designs really are people that are much smarter than me up at Nike. I guess maybe just more idea generation. Players will tell me like, hey, we wanted to wear a BCA jersey or they wanted to work on a Dornbecker's a cancer jersey or, or a Hana jersey. You know, we had a, a couple of players and some coaches recommend like, hey, let's do something that honors the Polynesian community. So I'll be the conduit to share those ideas with the smart people up at Nike, and then they'll come up with the, the great designs that, that are uniforms. Got a bunch of former players up at Nike, so they, they take a lot of pride in designing some cool stuff for our guys. Was there a design that you guys may have taken the loss in that you really liked the concept, but you had to retire it? Man, yeah, we wore the duck uniform in uh, 20, 16 against Colorado at home and it was a great game but we ended up losing that game right at the end but it was a sweet concept I, I thought it was really cool and it was something a former player really had, had thought of the concept and kind of pitched it three or four years before we actually did it. Who, who are some of the worst guys on jerseys this three years here like in game like man I got to repair this jersey I got to replace. Royce Freeman used to really mess his jerseys up when he was here playing running back because just it was running style so after the games you know I always have to get him a new jersey almost every game uh, replace the one that he was wearing. Um, Noah Sewell's like that right now so his jerseys after each game like numbers are getting ripped off and patches and you know those things are, are really roughed up but just those guys that, are, that have that physical style of play. A lot of O-line and D-line for sure. So this is like the the helmet grade guard as well? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's kind of an archive of stuff we've done over the years. And we always kind of want to have a sampling of, you know, all the shells we've done. And we've accented them obviously with different decals, different face masks, that kind of stuff over the years. Kind of gives us a little history and we can kind of look at stuff and we're kind of thinking about the next thing we want to do and, you know, idea generating. Who was this play against? So we wore that in a spring game, and then we also wore that against Washington. The game didn't go very well for us, so we don't really talk about Instantly that. Instantly retired. <laughs> what is this logo for? Uh, so we did a Lewis and Clark game a while back. We had like a, a jersey that had a topographical map in it. This one. You remember this so, game? Yeah, we wore that quite a few times. It was probably 2014, 2015, and we went to the national championship that year. So. Uh, we kind of went away from chrome wings and we went to this gray kind of faded gray wing marcus wore that helmet a lot i remember that from you know, his heisman campaigns what do you remember about this game like 2013 fiesta bowl we wore that against usc down in the coliseum and Kenyon barner had a huge game that game he rushed for like 270 yards or 200 a lot of yards so gotcha. yeah he like broke the record so i remember that helmet well just because of the chrome wings it's kind of when the wings were really getting going all right, Kenny, man, what kind of advice would you give to a, a young student manager that's kind of looking to be in a position like yours? Uh, persistence. Keep reaching out. Equipment managers like myself are, are busy a lot. For me, at least, when the application process comes along, there's, there'll be a certain time where I'm going to look for guys that want to be here. Those guys that have continually just reached out to me, stayed in touch, you know, just tapped in with me from time to time are the guys that come to my mind when I'm looking for guys. I do look at these jobs as a privilege. So there's a lot of expected uh, responsibilities. There's got to be a, a care factor and a want to. So those guys that have shown the persistence and the, their perseverance to, to keep reaching out and keep tapping in. There's some guys that have started with me just volunteering, like, hey, I just want to be part of it. You know, I don't need to be paid any of that kind of stuff. And they got themselves you know, in and I got to work with them and see how well they worked. And, you know, those have been guys that have turned into great equipment managers, gone on to big, big things in professional ranks. And, you know, the network, at least from under my tree, has, has expanded tremendously over the last, you know, 10, 15 years. What could a high school student that that's a current student manager, could they be doing in preparation to, to get to this level? Knowledge of the business is good. So, 
familiarizing themselves with the kind of things that you're going to work with, whether that's product, having football experience, at least for us, going out there and, you know, you don't have to have been a football player. I think it does help, but if you're, you're not a player, but somebody that's involved, somebody that's got a work ethic, I think having a job when they're in high school is, is important because when you get here and you're putting in the kind of hours that it takes to be a student manager at University of Oregon, it's you know, it's, it can be a culture shock to some guys going to school and doing this job, especially right their first term. Most of all, I think just having a selfless attitude, they're servant jobs. We're here to serve a purpose for the team and, and play our role. And you know what I tell a lot of guys is equipment managers, it's, you know, you're expected to do a good job. You did, you know, everything perfectly. You're not probably not going to get a pat on the back for doing a great job, but you mess something up and you're going to hear about that. So it's just, you got to understand that that's the, the way that it's going to work and, and take pride in being a part of something that's bigger than yourself.